Welcome to Shortcut Reviews where we get right to the point and today we'll be looking at the Spyderco Pingo. This is designed by two Danish knife makers, Johns Onslow and Jasper Voxnes. Uh, it was designed to comply with um, Denmark's knife laws. Those have recently changed. They've become a little bit more liberal, more like UK knife laws and as an American I'm not sure I can call that liberal. but. Um, they're now allowed uh, one-hand openers. Uh, one of the design elements of this knife was you can only open the knife with two hands, didn't have a lock, had a relatively short blade. Uh, this one's just a little over two inches. And so that was the design um, parameters they were working with. So let's take a size comparison. This is another um, Jasper Voxness design knife, the CRKT Pilar. And it is built uh, stout as hell, and we'll have a review about this in another day. The obvious comparison, of course, is the Dragonfly, also by Spyderco, another very small EDC knife. Our zebra pen that we, we love. And then the thing that everyone knows, at least YouTube tells me the vast majority of my viewers know, a US dollar bill. So you can see it's not a very big knife. So let's, let's take a look at some of the design elements of this. That's pretty cool. So there was a hole right here where we see a thumb stud now. And that thumb stud is just, just proud of, uh, the, uh, of, the, the, of the, uh, the scales. That hole was basically a trademark hole. Um, just, like, just like all the spider crows have a hole. And this one was just non-functional because it was so small. This is not a patented item. It is a trademarked item. And trademarks never uh, go out. Uh, they never run out of time. So Spyderco will have the hole as a trademark symbol, you know, as long as they're in business. So anyone who really uses a round hole like this is, you know, infringing upon a trademark. So I don't know if it was by accident or by design, they drilled this hole 3 16 of an inch. And there are lots of thumb studs that will fit a 3 and 16 of an inch hole. So this, this little thumb stud's got a collar at the bottom that goes in the hole. It's got a screw that comes in from the other side, a little Loctite. I did chamfer the, hole, chamfer the hole so the screw fits flush. And now, voila, it's a one-hand opening knife. It's still a two-hand closing knife, though, uh, unless you want to try to cut yourself. So you can open it one hand. It's not easy. Uh, people complain about, you know, how easy it is to open back locks. Well, this is like a back lock times 10. Uh, it's under spring pressure a lot. It's got a halfway notch right here. So then you got to kind of push it past that and when closing it, it hits the halfway notch and you got to really push to close it the rest of the way and that's kind of a safety feature. There's also some other safety features. So the only jimping you see on this little knife and really a little EDC knife like this does not need a lot of jimping. But this little jimping is more like a speed ramp as you're getting close to the blade. So to try to prevent your finger from riding up on the blade. And then that unsharpened edge, when you close it, you have an unsharpened edge to hit your finger if your fingers are still there. So both of those are safety features, uh, which is kind of nice. It's a full flat grind. It is made out of N690 uh, steel, which is probably the nicest non-powdered steel available. So that's a really nice upgrade from the standard VG10 of the cheaper Japanese line of the Dragonfly or Delica. Real simple construction. No liners, uh, FRN will flex just a little bit on heavy squeezing, but not anything that you would do in real life. The, uh, the pocket clip though is one of the advantages over the Dragonfly. You can see it's a much longer clip and they do the exact same thing that the other do is they, they put a flat spot and this happens to be a bug on the Dragonfly. It's this little oval, you know, that's a Spyderco Dragonfly. And that's the place where your clip rides uh, depending on what side you put it on and it's both tip up left or right carry. And it's a nice smooth place that doesn't tear up your pocket when it goes in. Now, this knife has less traction than the Dragonfly, but it doesn't matter. You, what you can see though, is that the Pingo sits deeper in the pocket and has a longer clip, which will help prevent it from jumping out of your pocket, which some short knives you know, like to do uh, more than longer and heavy knives, obviously. So that's kind of nice. This edge, these edges in here are much better finished than on the Dragonfly, so there's a lot less hot spots to this knife. The handle's a little odd. Uh, there are some really nice things about having that forward finger choil on the Dragonfly, but uh, my, my, my medium-sized hand fits this pretty well for the type of cutting that it's gonna do, which is, you know, packages, boxes, string, cardboard. Um, you're not gonna be batoning this through anything, uh, not that you should, but 
be batoning a folding knife at all. But uh, you know what I mean. You're not going to use this super heavy work. Uh, this is made in Italy, and that's why they use that European steel. Very rust-resistant steel. Uh, simple construction. Easy to carry. Um, this blade shape has no flat in it, uh, and it is the least scary blade shape ever. There's not even anything pointy, and if you work in an environment where people get scared really easily, uh, it's even less scary than the dragonfly, and that's a hard that's a hard task to be less scary than the dragonfly. The handle's got a little bit more chunk in it, and I kind of like that. It, it makes it feel like a bigger knife. The cutting edge isn't substantially different. Uh, it's almost identical um, if you look at it. A little not quite as good for piercing tasks, right? Which which obviously the point is, but it's got a bigger handle to it, and it's got this bigger spot in the back that really, really makes it feel pretty good. And again, this size knife, not having a locking blade, I haven't, I just haven't seen any use case that I've had so far where I've been worried about the knife not staying open, right? I'm mean, gonna tend to cut this way, right? And um, I guess if you're pulling out of something, you just have to be maybe a little bit more careful, that's it. The two-handed closing is probably the biggest downside of this design. And once you add the $3 thumb stud from knifekits.com, you have a one-handed opening. It's not the smoothest one-handed opening. There's no fidget factor on this knife at all. But great steel, small size, very inexpensive right now. I want to say it's probably about the same price as the VG10 Dragonfly uh, and a substantially better steel. So thanks for taking a look at it. Uh, just know that if you get it, you're going to be reprofiling it, probably spending three bucks for the thumb stud if you live in a jurisdiction that allows. And it's amazing that even the placement of the thumb stud is actually out of the cutting path. It's actually behind the plunge grind. So it, you don't really use, lose any blade because of that. Uh, you know, where you see the hole here is, is you know, through the plunge grind. So, so you couldn't put a stud in that even though it's too big and you don't need to. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna wind up losing cutting surface because of that, that thumb stud like you do on some knives. So again, thanks for joining the review. Nick Shabazz does a great review of this knife too. Uh, I suggest you check it out. I'll actually put a link in the comments. He kind of hated this knife. So it's good to you know hear two sides. Uh, thanks again and uh, stay sharp.